Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Global Compliance Panel's live webinar on understanding the new USP chapter 1224 for transfer of analytical methods. My name is Michael, and I'll be your host for today's session. And on behalf of the Global Compliance Panel team, I'd like to thank you all for being part of today's session. Today's webinar is being presented by Mr. Dr. Ludwig Huber. A few words about Dr. Huber before we start off today's session. Dr. Huber holds a PhD, is the Director of Lab Compliance and also Chief Advisor for Global FDA Compliance at Agile and Technologies. And he's also the editor of Lab Compliance, which is a global online resource for validation and compliance issues for laboratories. And he's also the author of the books Validation and Qualification in Analytical Laboratories and also Validation of Computerized Analytical and Network Systems in Former Healthcare. And we are honored to have Dr. Huber with us today to host today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start off today's session, I just want to quickly outline today's program. This webinar is for a 75-minute duration. First, Dr. Huber will take you through today's webinar, highlighting the areas that he would cover and then share with you his presentation. And also would like to inform all our participants today that once part of today's teleconference, you're being placed on mute and would remain so until the Q&A begins. We have a couple of minutes at the end for your question and answers, but if you do come up with questions during the session, ladies and gentlemen, please post your questions in the Q&A panel or the chat column, and we can get to them during the Q&A at the end. And for any reason, ladies and gentlemen, if you do get logged out of today's session, please follow the same procedure to join in again. Now that we're all ready, I request uh, Dr. Huber to take it from you. Doctor? Yeah, thank you very much, Michael, for uh, introducing me, and welcome everybody joining us today. This presentation is about the transfer of analytical methods and procedure according to a relatively new USP Chapter 1224, and the focus of this chapter is uh, very much on controlled transfer. The seminar should give you a good understanding of USP and FDA requirements, but also strategies for implementation. And I want to make you also familiar with reference material that should help you to easily implement what you have learned today. Uh, this slide gives an overview of today's seminar. I will start with FDA and USP requirements about guidelines and enforcement practices. So I will show you a couple of uh, those FDA warning letter statements. I will then talk about details of the USB chapter with different options for controlled transfer. And then the most important part of the seminar will be a discussion of a strategy and the plan or protocol for the transfer. The transfer plan should also define responsibilities for the sending and the receiving laboratory. Then I will go through the transfer process for the comparative testing option. I will then give advice on how to handle deviations. Then I will finish the seminar with documentation uh, that should be developed before or during or at the end of the transfer process. And most important of them is the transfer report. Michael already mentioned it. If you have any question now, during my presentation, we encourage you to post them on the chat or in the Q&A section of the, of the chat room. And uh, this will be, allow me to sort them a little bit at the end and um, we, have, uh, we, have, we can categorize them. Also, there is a possibility, as Michael said, to, uh, to, to ask a question live through audio. So we have all types of possibilities. Okay, with this I go to, oh, this is also an interesting site here. As always, I also for this conference, I have prepared a reference material. For example, there is a master plan entitled Transfer of Analytical Methods and Procedures. Then uh, there is a one SOP, which is very much related to the topic of the seminar, Transfer of Analytical Methods. Another one, which is close similar, which is verification of compendial methods, according also to a USP chapter, but this is 1226. This is important. I mean, not to forget anything. I mean, this checklist, I mean, they are quite useful. Uh, it's, not a, it's not really it's that much important that you really comply, you really implement each checklist item. It's just that you look at it and it's just to make sure that you don't forget the most important things. So there is one on transfer of analytical methods and procedures. Uh, then we have a couple of templates also 
on transfer of analytical methods and procedure. Also, there is one on laboratory audits in general. And we also have, I'm not quite sure, I think about 10 examples of uh, originals of FDA warning letter, original quotes. And if you have not done it, the link here, the link what you see here is on the chat, at the chat room or at the Q&A session, you can, you can get access to it. So there is a hyperlink, so you, this opens up directly to the website. And the website is, uh, you have to enter a user ID, which is uh, shown here what it is, or this is a password is showing what it is. And this website will be available until June 30. If anybody uh, listens to the recorded version later on, if the website already has expired, no problem at all. Just uh, send me an email to Ludwig underscore Huber at labcompliance.com, and I will upload the uh, site for a while, for some period of time which gives you enough time to download the material. And what you see here as reference material on this page is not everything. We have more, uh, some links also to some FDA presentations, a very important one, a very interesting one. Uh, also with some case studies, so this is quite useful when uh, I provide them with all my seminars here. Okay, we go to this slide here, I mean, which shows the uh, 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 we chose examples for controlled method transfer for occurrence, and they include, for example, transfer of methods from a pharmaceutical company to a regulatory agency. So, for example, because sometimes they ask for samples uh, to analyze samples, they don't want to analyze, they don't want to validate the method, they just want to transfer the method which you have developed and validated or if you also did take a USB chapter, for example. Then uh, I think uh, one of the most important applications is also to go from analytical development to quality control labs, because usually the methods are developed in a development laboratory, and they are mostly used for routine use in quality control laboratories. Also across different sites, uh, for example, different manufacturing sites, where you may have similar or different conditions, uh, and then also we talk about existing instruments. You also can use a process, you also can use the idea here, uh, the strategy and the documentation when you take existing existing applications from an existing instrument to new instrumentation. For example, if it has different specification, yes, then you can use a method transfer process. Uh, also, if, it's, if you have different technology, you have to do a little bit more. Also, if you uh, have a good supplier of your reference material, uh, if it's really very, very polite, uh, they also will give you the method, the method that you can run and cross-check the material. And uh, of course, this method also has to be formally transferred and uh, as either transferred to new instruments with different instrument characteristics. And right at the top, I forgot to say that uh, if a sponsor company has a, a validated method, and they wanted to use a contract lab to run this method and don't pay the money for developing a new one, as they can just use the same transfer process. So, I, this slide shows here a definition of the transfer of analytical procedure, and here you see the first time this is a USP 1224, this is what we talk about today. Most important here are the words documented process, and the process should ensure that the receiving unit has the procedural knowledge and the ability to perform the transferred analytical procedure as intended. No matter what the definition is, the important points here are that the receiving laboratory is qualified to use the transferred method and that the laboratory consistently, so consistently gets the same results uh, as a transferring laboratory, laboratory tray, day in, tray, day out. So, next one here. This slide has reasons why we should pay attention to controlled method transfer. And uh, there are always, uh, most of the time when we talk about compliance, there are two reasons. Number one is to comply with regulations, to meet the expectations of the inspector when they come into your laboratory and uh, and, uh, and, and inspect you for, you for FDA compliance, GMP compliance, for example. And equally important, uh, maybe at, in, in the long term, it's, it's not more important, but uh, about the same 
important is to reduce fail rates or to improve the quality of analytical results through a controlled, a controlled 